hello everyone how are you all doing today i hope you're good another quick video two days ago i uploaded a video and we talked about the damages our tongues can cause in relationships and marriages before i even go on i'm outside you might hear cars passing by but i'm sure you can still hear me so today i promise i'm going to talk about some of the antidotes we can use to encounter the effects of those damages that our tongue <laughs> our tongues causes so the first one but before then without even uh, uh, wasting time we are going to go into um, I normally like to use a Bible verse or verses to support what I say and today the Bible verse is coming from Ephesians 4 verse 29 and it says do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others or according to their needs yeah so that's uh, the bible verse we are using today and i've listed about five antidotes there are many but just five simple antidotes that we can use to counteract the effect you know what is an antidote antidote is something that is used to reverse uh, if, if toxicity in something for example in, in pharmacology they uh, they use an um, uh, antidote but that's a drug reaction or whatever they as an antidote to help to counteract the effect of that uh, drug that's uh, exactly what antidote is so today we are looking at it from the angle of relationship uh, marriages and the things we say uh, in our mouth how do we reverse how do we what's the antidote what's the, what are the antidotes so number one is to apologize for all that you have done or said and when you apologize please mean it because once there's sincere apology and forgiveness then um, relationships and marriages can start rebuilding itself but you have to apologize a minute not saying things like I'm sorry if or I'm sorry but no 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 once you start using those words that means that you're not actually um, sorry so don't use i just say i'm sorry if you feel like that or i'm sorry but you caused this no 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 just apologize sincerely and mean it and then uh, try we're human beings we apologize and we still we even do that with god we we do things and we still go back to it but once we apologize let us mean it and then keep working on ourselves because we are all work in progress so that's number one to apologize a minute and the next one is to be quiet to be reserved and thoughtful I put all these three together you know quiet reserved and thoughtful sometimes when there's all this noise um, um, argument or things one person can choose to be quiet to be reserved and thoughtful obviously spouses should apply the same uh, principle but when it comes to it that there's one person is just a uh, heated up just be that because what you can never regret what you did not say you only regret what you say so always remember these three points and it will help a lot when other person is all heated up try and be calm if possible the next one number three is to promise yourself that you will not use such words again and you can even remind your spouse to say to, remind them to say look please tell me or remind me when i start using such words again because you may not even be using such words without even knowing it and unless the person reminds you or tells you you may not even know that those words are hurtful so always ask them to remind you and that and when somebody says that to you that means that they actually want to change you know because I, you, know, you know you can never change anybody unless they want to change so when somebody says to remind them that means they actually want to change but maybe they can't help themselves so always remind them and remind them in a calm way not in a shouting way yeah so that's number three and the, the next one number four is to for both husband and wife or in the relationship to always acknowledge each other always uh, give give praises to each other if, if you have said horrible things before you can reverse it by using uh, pleasant words uh, back um, to, uh, to the person you know 
do, do, use use pleasant words to counteract what you have said before. You can tell your wife how beautiful they are, your you know, things like that. You may not even just say, "Oh, you look nice." You can use adjectives like, "Oh, you look great," "You look lovely," "You look fantastic," and things like that. And for the your husband, you can also use very good uh, words to him as well. And for both of you, you can tell each other that you have both uh, you are both uh, proud of each other. And then when you use such words, even if the person is not pulling their weight or they're not doing, doing what they should do, when you use such kind words and say, oh, I'm proud of you, then the person will think, oh, wow, they're proud of me even though I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. They will act, that will actually help the person to do more, to help them to do better. Actually, try it. It does help a lot. These are just simple antidotes, but they do work wonders in marriages or in relationships. And the next one, the fourth one, I think, have I lost track of uh, numbers? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll recount them later. But the next one, which I cannot overemphasize on, is to sincerely pray. I had to use the word sincerely because if you have not forgiven the person, you still have a new, um, issues with the person in your mind. You can never pray for them. No matter how much you try to pray, remember the Bible said that if you um, have iniquity in your heart, I will not hear you. So your prayers will not be answered unless you actually forgive that person and then you can sincerely pray for them because we have to do practical things and then we'll have to pray it's not always about oh i'm praying for you or i'll pray for her him or her no you have to do practical things and then you have to pray yes prayer does work prayer works wonders but you must also be practical in, in whatever you do in any relationship and communication is a big antidote as well when you communicate sit down and talk to the person because they may actually be doing what they don't they don't even know that they're doing it so always be prayerful and in that prayer obviously also communicate and the next one the last uh, point I want to raise today is to sincerely um, sorry to take time to really li uh, listen to your spouse make sure you listen very very well not when they are talking to you you are maybe watching tv or you are looking in your on your phone or your laptop and you're too busy and you're just saying eh, 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 and you're not even listening to what they're saying so make out time to listen just like uh, james 1 verse 19 says that we should um listen sorry let everyone be uh, quick to listen yes quick to listen slow to speak and slow to anger so always apply James 1 verse 19. Be quick to listen. Listen to what the person have got to say. Listen what, to what their issues are. And then be slow to speak. Because what they're saying may not be what you want to hear. And you just uh, attack them. No. Be slow to speak. Analyze what they're saying first. And then be slow to anger. You know, because we understand things differently. The way I understand something may not be the way my husband will understand it. And vice versa. That's why it's very good for you to be very very quick to listen be slow to speak analyze things first look at it from the other person's point of view and then be slow to anger before you get upset or get, if you really analyze things it will be difficult for you to get ang angry quickly so in any relationship in the resolving things and in the bigger one of the major um antidotes to resolving things will be in james 1 verse 19 always be quick to listen be ready to give the person your full attention, but be slow to speak. Think about what they've said first. Don't read, don't read uh, your own meaning into it. Just ask, if you don't understand what they say, you can ask them to, how do you mean? What do we mean by this? And they will explain to you. And when they explain to you, it is how they feel. Don't try and say, um, well, it's not um why are you feeling like that you don't you have no right to tell anybody how they feel that's how they feel and they've made you aware that this is how they feel and they're now happy about something please see their point of view so i reiterate apologize be quiet reserved and thoughtful tell your spouse to remind you when you start using hurtful words acknowledge each other and use lovely words for um with, for each other Pray sincerely for each other and then take time to really listen to your spouse in line with James 1 verse 19. This is where I'm going to stop it. It's, I know it's quite short and very simple uh, things that we think, oh, there are things we know already, but think about them. 
these simple things can actually do wonders in our relationships and marriages. It's not that serious. Things are so, your life is so simple, but sometimes we make it complicated to our own detriment. You see people looking so unwell, looking much older than they are, just because of their building, they're always unhappy. We don't need that in our marriages or in our relationships. Thank you so much for listening. Please share me out. This video is quite short. I'll always make, like to make it short so you can watch from beginning to end. Share this out for others to benefit as well. God bless you all and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Goodbye and remain positive. Mm -hmm.